The history of modern acoustics began with the design of the Fogg Art Museum Lecture Hall at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. When the building was erected in 1895, the acoustics of the main lecture hall space were a disaster, and the space could not be used for lectures. Wallace Clement Sabine, a 27-year-old new assistant professor in the physics department, was asked to find a solution. He started by considering the age-old problem of why the acoustics of some rooms were good, while others were mediocre or impossible. Sabine isolated himself from his colleagues in the physics department and worked with two lab assistants late in the evening and early in the morning to avoid the impact of street noise and the vibrations from the newly constructed Harvard Square subway line. He had promised the university authorities to return everything to normal each morning by class time, so he and his assistants dragged hundreds of upholstered seat cushions from the nearby Sanders Theater to the lecture hall after midnight each night and back again at dawn. Sabine studied and measured the sound quality of similar spaces. He used his ears and a stopwatch to measure the length of reverberations from organ pipes. Through his efforts, Sabine was able to develop reverberation equations and absorption coefficients for many common building materials. He discovered that the reverberation time of a room is directly proportional to the cubic volume of the room and inversely proportional to the sound absorption provided at the room's boundary surfaces and by the room's furnishings. His equation uses the simple dimensions of the room and absorption coefficients of materials to determine the acoustic effect of the space, offering a simple method for architects to determine favorable room proportions and treatments. Thanks to Sabine's recommendations, the Fogg Lecture Hall was reopened in 1898. Sabine then went on to work as acoustic consultant for Boston Symphony Hall. His input resulted in one of the world's best concert halls. Incidentally, the Fogg Lecture Hall satisfied Sabine but remained unpopular with the faculty who lectured there. In 1912, the hall was reduced in size from around 400 to 200 seats and redesigned with a semicircular wall and flat floor. By World War II, much of the curved wall was covered with hair felt, felt made from animal hair, and perforated asbestos board. In the 1960s, the floor was carpeted, but students complained of a whispering gallery effect and difficulty hearing at some locations. In 1972, the wall was covered with highly absorbent glass fiberboard, and a large canopy was added at the front, which finally improved intelligibility. Ironically, the space was demolished in 1973. However, it was tested first, and the curved wall and domed ceiling were found to be the cause of the intelligibility problems. The Fogg Lecture Hall is a lesson not only in the development of the art and science of acoustics, but also is a reminder of both how difficult it can be to remedy a space that is initially built with poor proportions, and how inexact the process of acoustic design can be. It is much, much easier to design a well-proportioned and properly finished space than to remedy a bad design once the building is complete. It is difficult, if not impossible, to retrofit a proper acoustic design without substantial structural alterations. Solutions to acoustic problems depend on experience, judgment, and common sense, along with at least a conceptual understanding of the basic properties of sound, how it is propagated throughout building spaces, and how various building materials and construction systems influence it.